Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to teach you how to fold this tree with a sunset behind it. This is the third sunset design that I've taught. You can go check out the other two if you haven't watched them yet, but this one is the most complex out of the three. The sunset is made the same way as the other ones with those radial pleats, but the tree is made using box pleating. It's relatively simple for box pleating, but if you've never done any box pleating before, then it might be a little bit difficult, but I do try to walk through everything as clearly as I can. And I use the same way of making duo paper as I did in my last two videos, which is by taking two six inch sheets of kami and gluing them together using a glue stick. It's a bit of a primitive way of making duo paper, but it's pretty fast and it works. Feel free to use whatever method you'd like, methyl cellulose, you could use nicer glue than a glue stick, you could paint one side of the paper. It's up to you, experiment and get creative, but let's start folding. <laughs> Here I have my sheet of paper that is brown on one side that will become the tree and then it's yellow on the other side that will become the sunset. I'm going to start with the sunset side up and we're going to valley fold this in half vertically. And unfold. And then turn the paper over. And from the tree side, we'll valley fold in half horizontally. And then unfold. And now bring the bottom edge up to meet that horizontal crease we just made. Then bring the top edge down to meet the new bottom edge. Now unfold both of those. And then bring the bottom edge up to meet the bottom most crease. then unfold. Next we're going to bisect this angle. We're going to bisect that with a valley fold that extends this direction and it stops when it hits the topmost horizontal crease. So to do this we'll take this horizontal crease and then line it up with this vertical crease. Now make sure that lines up. The way you'll know for sure is that it should line up with the crease underneath it and then this horizontal crease should line up with the horizontal underneath that. And crease it down until you hit this crease. And then stop and unfold. And repeat that on the left side. Just making sure to stop when you hit that crease. Next we're going to take the edge on the left and bring it into the center vertical crease. And we're going to make a valley fold on the bottom section of the paper that stops when it hits this crease intersection right here with the diagonal crease. Start that crease and then stop right when you hit where that diagonal is. And unfold. Next bring the edge on the left in to lie along that new crease we just made. And this time you can actually extend this all the way up to the top of the paper. And now take the raw edge and fold it out to the new outer edge. Now unfold both of those. 
and repeat all of these steps on the right side. So bring the right edge into the center. Let's make sure you stop when you hit that diagonal and unfold. And then bring the outer edge into the crease we just made. This time you can extend it all the way up to the top. And then bring the raw edge to the new outer edge. And unfold both of those. Next, bring that edge on the right into this crease right here. And make sure to stop when you hit the diagonal. Same thing on the left. And then we need to make a crease that connects these two creases. So to do that, we can reform this crease. Then we'll just fold the edge up to this topmost crease and just crease right in between the diagonals. Then we'll unfold that and unfold that crease as well. Now, turn the paper over. Then we need to divide each of these sections in half. We're going to start with the verticals. To do this, we'll just reform this mountain fold that we have. Now we're going to take that edge and bring it into the mountain fold closest to it. And as we crease it down, just make sure to stop when you hit the diagonal. And with all the rest of these creases, we're going to be stopping when we hit this diagonal. Then move on to the next one, form that mountain fold. Bring it over to the next crease. Stop when you hit the diagonal and unfold. Then do that again. And repeat it all on the right. Then we'll use the same concept to make the horizontal creases. Just making sure to stop when we hit the diagonal. So form this as a mountain fold and bring it down to the crease below it. Then repeat that. And one more time. Next, we're going to form some smaller diagonals along this bottom edge. So we'll start with the bottom left corner. We're going to make a diagonal that runs from the very bottom left corner into this intersection right here. Let's we'll fold that and then show you up close. We're going to make these edges line up on the left. Then just fold it in two creases. Then we're going to make a crease that connects these two points. To do that, we'll just take the bottom edge and line it up with this crease, which is the fourth crease over. One, two, three, four. And then it will just run between these two points, so it'll stop when it hits the diagonal we just made.
Next we'll do a similar step on this next one, but we're only going to extend it over one crease. So we'll bring the bottom edge into lie along this vertical crease, but we're only going to go over one unit. And then bring that bottom edge up to lie along this crease. It was folding one unit again, so it will connect these two creases. Next, we'll fold a diagonal that goes two units again. So bring this bottom edge up to this vertical. Fold it two units. And then fold it back down two units. Then do that again. So two units again. And then two units one more time. And then we'll just do one unit. And then one more unit, extending it all the way out to the corner. Now we're going to turn the paper over and we're going to make some creases in between these diagonals. We only need them in between the two unit diagonals. We'll start over on the left here. See, we have these two diagonals. We need to make a mountain fold that runs between these two points so it connects these mountain folds. So I'll show you what I mean. Just fold that over and then pinch connecting those creases. That one wasn't perfect, I'm gonna fix that. That looks a little better. And then move on to the next one. Do the same thing right here. Then move all the way over to this one on the right and do the same thing. Now we have all of the pre-creasing done for these little Elias stretches and inside reverse folds. We'll be adding in later during the collapsing and shaping process. Now the last bits of pre-creasing we have to do are just these radial pleats that form the sunset. First we're going to just reform these long pleats we have on the outside. So fold over along this valley fold. And then fold the other pleat as well. Just back out on the existing creases. Same thing on the right. And now turn the paper over. Next, we're going to bisect this angle. This will actually run all the way out to the top right corner. And for all of these radial pleats, they're only going to be above this horizontal crease. So nothing we make in these steps will extend below this crease. And now if you look at this little flap up here, you notice I didn't crease that, just fold it over along that edge. And you can let it swing back open. And then do the same thing on the left side. Let's 
swing that little flap over and then unfold that. Next, we're going to bisect to this angle. To do that, we'll bring this horizontal crease up to this diagonal crease. Then we'll bisect to this angle. So we'll bring this vertical crease into that same diagonal. Unfold. Now with each of these, we just want to make sure they extend right to this point where these intersections are. So all of these creases are going to meet at the same intersection. Repeat that on the right. Next, we need to reverse this topmost horizontal. So that just bring the top edge down to this crease right here. Just reversing the direction so that crease now is a valley fold. And now we'll turn the paper over and we need to bisect each of these angles. We'll start with this one on the right. We'll do this by forming this as a mountain fold and then form the crease above that as a mountain fold as well. And then press down in between those creases. Then bring those two edges in to meet each other. In the process, you'll form a new valley fold in between them. Then do the same thing with the next creases. So form that next one as a mountain fold and bring them together. And then while we're right here, we can actually just tuck this little flap inside. So we already have the crease in place. Just take that little flap and tuck it underneath right here, just so it's out of the way. And then just repeat those steps, bring these two edges together. And one more time. Now that we've collapsed half of those, it can be helpful to form this into a mountain fold, just that center crease. And then we'll repeat all of this on the left side. Flap away. And keep pleating. We have just one more. Now we've completed all of those pleats, so we should be able to lie it flat and press it all down firmly. Then we're actually going to unfold the whole thing. And 
Next, we want to reverse these diagonal creases. So bring this edge on the right up to this horizontal crease. Just reversing the direction of those diagonals. Same thing on the left here. And then valley fold the whole thing in half. Then we'll pick this up and rotate so we have these radial pleats on the right side. And then we're going to inside reverse fold along these creases. Just open it up and swing the flap through right along these creases and close it up. Now over the next steps, we're going to be open sinking in and out along all of these creases. If you're familiar with box pleating, this should be pretty easy for you. You could just go ahead and do that. But I'm going to start by open sinking just this very first mountain fold that is right along this edge. So open that up and form the mountain fold all the way around. And then we want to form the valley fold that's right next to it. Since we've already made all these creases, this should happen pretty naturally. And then close it all back up. Now we need to just do that again. We'll sink it another level. So just form the mountain fold that lies along those edges. Open it up a bit. And then as you do that, you can start to form the valley fold right next to it. And close it all up. Then we just have one more mountain fold to sink along. So just form those mountains and sink that layer. And then it should all look like this. Next, we're going to focus in on this area. We're going to make these little reverse folds and Elias stretches. So we'll start with this very first one. If you open it up, you can see we have these mountain folds. You need to turn this into an Elias stretch. Um, basically, just to do that, we're going to form the mountain fold in between these creases. And then as we do that, we'll form the diagonals as well. So this area of the diagonals will be a mountain fold and then where they connect on the inside will become valley folds. So just press those in as we close it up and press directly on this area as you close it all. It should close up like that. And if we just move on to the next one, this is just a Small inside reverse fold, should be pretty easy. And then the next one is another Elias stretch, so do this just like before. Begin to form those diagonals and then form that mountain fold that connects them. And then press in as you close it up. And then we have another Elias stretch, do the same thing. And the very last one is just a little inside reverse fold. Now we have collapsed everything. So we need to open this up and just orient it in the right way. So we're going to open these layers apart from each other. I'm gonna look at it from this side. Just hold this section where the tree is in place and just open these layers. Just keep opening it and it'll sort of do a little pop through to the other side. 
and then let's move the tree up. You should have something that looks like this. But from here, everything is already in place. All we have from here is just shaping. So there's a lot of different ways you could do this. That's all personal preference. I'm gonna do um, a little bit of an easy array that still looks really good. So we're just going to be folding this branch in half. Fold that in half and then move on to the next one. Try doing the same thing, but there's a lot of layers here. Won't be able to fold all the way in half, but it'll go right to where it catches on these little edges here. But I'll just show you what I mean. Basically just fold that all down. And then you can pull out just this one little flap. Pull that flap out to the side and press it down too. And then when we move on to the next one, I'm going to fold it in half, but from the other side. Then the same thing with this last one, just fold it in half from the bottom and pull this little flap out. Get some very basic shaping there. And you can try to fold the whole tree in half. Make it look a little more round. Just about like that. And then you can play around with this. Just move the branches to the different sides. And I like to kind of open these layers apart from each other just a little bit. This is really helpful with tweezers, but just so I it shows the different layers and it looks kind of like how a tree would. It's hard to explain, but just take your time and really just get creative and move these layers around however you would like. I've also done this where I turn each of them into an open sink. And then that gives a lot of layers that you can see on the outside. There's tons of ways you could do it. If you wanted to open sync each of them, I'll do that just with this little one right here. So you're just open syncing on the creases you already have. I'm only using six inch kami. These are really small details, so it's a lot easier to do this with tweezers. There's a little bit of an open sink there. You could go around and do that on every single branch. Or you can just fold them over to the side like this. You can fold them back up too. You could even try just twisting it all the way around. It's really completely up to you. And you can bend them in different directions. Turn this one into an open sink.
Okay, we've got a little bit of shaping there. If you notice, these layers all want to kind of separate from each other. The best way to stop that from happening is to get some water. Let's get some water, a paintbrush, and some clothespins. Then we're going to dip our brush in the water. Then we're just going to dab water in between every one of these pleats. Just putting water in between every one of those pleats. And then get it on the edges as well. And then do the same thing on the inside. You don't have to use a ton of water. And the most important part to get, you could just do a little bit of water on the edges. It'll dry a little faster, but either way, just get some water on there and then grab the clothespins and Pinch it with the clothespins. And then just allow that to dry. Now it's been a little while, this should be dry. So I'm gonna pull these clothespins off. And then fold this up. And there we have it. I did that with just some basic shaping. You can definitely take some time on yours and get that tree looking really nice. I'll show some clips of ones that I spent a bit more time on at the end here. But if you do the wet folding, it should be able to stand up on its own nicely. But I hope you had a lot of fun folding this one. I hope yours looks awesome. Make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know how you did. Of course, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And I do post new origami videos every single week, so make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.